time for the throwdown at Zest Fest 2015. If you would direct your attention to the celebrity chef stage, first, the master of cowboy cuisine, the man who began his career when a chef quit in the middle of dinner, and he was forced to feed 100 hungry patrons with no notice of prep time. He had a baptism by fire. He has operated restaurants from Vegas to Beverly Hills, from Alpine to Sugarland. He currently operates Grady's on Forest Park Boulevard in Fort Worth, and he is in his sixth year as the consulting chef at NRG Stadium for the Houston Texans. His well-received cookbooks include A Cowboy in the Kitchen, Cowboy Cocktails, and The Great Steak Book. You may remember him from the Today Show, the CBS Early Show, Good Morning America, and Food Network, as well as his RFD TV series, The Cowboy's Kitchen. Would you please welcome the pride of Fort Worth, Stone Cold Grady Spears. His opponent today, formerly the private chef to Tony Parker and Eva Longoria in San Antonio, invited to the White House to develop and launch the Chef's Move to Schools initiative, star and host of the web series Let's Eat Houston, and from season 10 of the next Food Network star, as well as the author of the upcoming cookbook, Lone Star Kitchen, and the creator and developer of Mommy Salt's 100% Dead Sea Salts. Would you please welcome the pride of Denton, Texas. This is Sarah Penrod. <laughs> Are you having a good time? Yeah. How about some gifties? Raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I like people who stand up. Oh, that was bad. Am I good? It's my silly shirt. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Sarah. I want to welcome you to Zest Fest. This is my first year. Is it your first year? Have you guys been here many years? That's what I hear. This is my friend Grady. <laughs> He's got we were friends already. until today. Yeah. I met Grady uh, in Austin at a food and wine festival, and it was really special for me because I was about 20 when you got hot. I remember sitting on the banks of Possum Kingdom Lake reading his cookbook. So I am so happy that he came to join me today. Let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you. I'm up for this one today. I mean, can you imagine challenging a girl on Bake Off? Am I crazy or what? Huh? <laughs> I'm stupid, so. so. All right, what are we gonna bake today? Today is battle cornbread. We tried to keep it pretty Texas-y. Uh, so today will be battle cornbread. Tomorrow will be battered battle chicken fried steak. Do you wanna tell them what you're gonna be making? Um, I, well, today, you know what, I took, um, I'm gonna take a savory approach to cornbread. So. Um, I cheated a little bit on the front end. I'm sure she'll tell you that because I got busted. But um, I'm going to make um, green chilies and with uh, chorizo and a little bit of pepper jack cheese, some eggs, a little milk, mix that together. And I'm going to make a maple butter, um, kind of a, a, um, a cowboy butter that we're going to brush on top. And so um, mine's more savory. I think she's going on the sweet end. So um, I could be in trouble here, actually. I'm thinking. So. Yeah, he is in trouble. I, I knew you'd do savory. I, I'm, I'm, I knew I'm, you could would. be in trouble. And I knew that you were all going to be having spicy food. So um, I wanted to do a sweet cornbread. I'm going to be doing a banana nut cornbread with a cinnamon pancio ice cream, which is the Mexican sugar that we have uh, available you know, everywhere around here. A toffee sauce from Sweetwater, Texas. It's about a 150-year-old recipe. And little banuelos. So I'm in let, trouble. Let's rock. All right, Are you I'm ready? I'm ready, so. Okay. Uh, I think any good toffee sauce is going to start with brown sugar. And I had a little bit of trouble with these pots yesterday, so I'm going to start it right away. This is about one and a half cups, uh, one and a half pounds of brown sugar. 
a quart of heavy cream, butter and molasses, and that's it. And you're just gonna let it go for about two hours. I've already gotten beat. Butter and molasses and sugar and... Okay, and so what I've got going here is I've got, um, I'm gonna take and, and saute some chorizo. is a Mexican sausage. Um, and this has got quite a bit of fat in it, so um, I love fat, you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute this chorizo down, get it cooked off, set it aside, and then we'll fold that into the cornbread mix, all right? Caramel sauce is divine by itself, but it's always better with a little bit of salt. My baby is screaming at me from the front row. Hi, Gabriel. Do you remember the baby food that I made on Food Network? That was for that guy. <laughs> Okay, so I've got, what I'm doing over here is I've got the chorizo cooking over here on the side. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I took, um, <laughs> I've got some poblanos. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about what you've done over here. <laughs> but anyway, I got some poblanos that I've roasted off. And you can roast these two different ways. You can put them in an oven, um, in a broiler and roast them. You can put them on an open fire. Um, you can put them on a grill. But basically I darken the skin. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the knife and just kind of um, scrape the, um, that dead skin off of it. And the next thing I'm going to do is I hate the seeds. And so this is an easy way to, um, let me get a little water. Got some water. Oh, I have water here. Do you have any water? Water. Okay, so I've got the chili scraped. I've got this, the, um, the um, skin scraped off it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and cut the top off of it. And then I'm gonna dip it in the water and the water will take all the seeds off, so watch. So I dip it in water and all of a sudden the seeds, you're free of seeds. So a lot of the purists will say, oh, you're diluting the chili. You try to do three or 400 of these things, I promise you, you'll use the water trick, so. So anyway, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and just dice the uh, chili. You know, I'm a mom. I hope you can hear me with this little heat shirt I'm wearing. So, uh, you know, the idea of me standing and roasting chilies one by one, <laughs> it's like, that's great, on the range, maybe, no. Uh, so what I do is I turn the oven rocking hot, like NASA hot, I don't know, 450, 500, and I put mine in and I'll start doing dishes. And within about 15 or 20 minutes, they puff up and I, I don't have to sit there and turn them. Actually, that is the best method, the way she described it, that is the best, me best method to roasting chilies. They're consistent. I mean, they, they, um, they, they seem to roast all the way around. So really putting them in a broiler, she says a hot oven, but I mean, I use a broiler, but that's an incredible yeah. way of roasting chilies. And if you, if you poke a hole in them to you know, make a slit in them, they won't pop up and, and um, the skin will come off a little easier. Oh, that's a good See? tip, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so for cornbread, you can hear me, right? Okay, I have the worst luck with microphones. Uh, for cornbread, it's such an easy method. It's gonna be all the dry in one bowl, all the wet in another. So I've got equal parts of cornmeal and flour because I believe in making my own cornbread. <laughs> and uh, where am I? A uh, couple eggs, here we go. And I didn't make my own? I don't know, I, I saw you roll up with some little boxes. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> I got busted, I, I walked in and she's looking through my bags. Of course I am. He knows, like, He's a on. cheater. He's so sneaky, Greedy Spheres. Uh, let's see, this is sugar. Baking powder. Salt for flavor. This is my eggs. Buttermilk, that's one of my secrets, especially cakes. Anything you wanna be moist and succulent and it has just a little bit of acidity to it. And then that was cream. I want this to be a really moist cornbread almost kind of like a corn cake. A little water. And then this is the butter and the honey. I don't consider this a dry ingredient or a wet ingredient. I'm gonna put it into a little pan and get it happy. And then it's gonna be the last thing that I stir in before I put it in the oven. You guys following her? Everybody, everybody following her? All right. Okay, while she's doing that, I'm gonna take, um, I've got the, the, the chorizo that we've got and we kind of sauteed it. I'm gonna take and set it aside. I've got the green chilies that we diced. 
So I'm gonna take and break two eggs. I cheated, all right? I'll be totally upfront. I bought some Jiffy cornbread mix, but I like Jiffy. It works really good. You just what gotta add to it. What hey, is come that? On. I could have bought flour and some leavening, I mean, and, and, and done what she did, but I mean, you know? That's good. I mean, honestly, with the kids, that sounds like something that I hey, would do. Hey, I'm, I'm telling you, it works. I mean, you, you've got to add some things to it, but it actually works really, really good. So I'm going to take, I, break, I, break, um, I broke two eggs into the, um, into the uh, cornbread mix. And the next thing I'm going to do is fold these eggs in. I'm going to add some milk. That was a little bit of oil. Okay, so while she's working away, I've got the cornbread mix, I've got the eggs, I've got the milk. I'm gonna add some jack cheese. Can I have a bite? Sure, try it. And the green chilies. And then the chorizo. I like jack cheese, I like anything with jack cheese in it. Yeah, cheese, you can make any, make boot leather taste good, the cheese, so. Okay, and then the chorizo. So now I'm gonna mix all this together. Okay, so these are my wet ingredients. I'm going to stir them until they look like one bowl of stuff. The egg yolks will sort of emulsify the oil into the water and you'll have a nice, clean cornbread mixture. Okay, and you know the nice thing about cornbread mixing, you know, once you've made the batch, if you make a batch of corn, you can actually take and refrigerate it, set it aside, you know, and, and then add things to it. So you might make a base and make, a, make my style, which would be chorizo and green chilies. The next one you might want to do sweet. So you can make a base just like you do with butters um, and then add to it. Okay, so where are What's you? What's in there? Tell me what well, you We've like. got chorizo, I've got cornbread mix. Did you, I got, make the, did you make the chorizo yourself? I did make the chorizo. Did you? I ground the pork. I, I, know, I know how to make chorizo. I can show you how. Today I didn't, but we normally do. You never okay. would have known if you hadn't gone through my bags, all right? Uh, that was pretty bad. And what did I discover? It was bad. Okay. Uh, wet into dry, and then, oop, pull that honey butter, because that's going to be the last thing here. It's kind of cool to take, like, breads, like banana bread or also, you can make a great pineapple upside down cake with your uh, cornbread mixture. And you can make it in a cast iron skillet so it looks really cool. So you're gonna bake these in, in sheet pans, in long sheet pans? Actually, she got me this really cool thing. So, you know, uh, if you were here yesterday, I'm in love with cast iron. Uh, I have my own little collection. It sounds kind of weird, but every time one of those old timers dies in my family, I race to get the cast iron skillet. I have my great grandmothers. There's some people around here that are pretty sore about that. I was the one who got it. That's right. I mean, what are you gonna do? Take an old painting off the wall? Go get the cast iron skillet. That's where the power is. Uh, I love cast iron. I love it because I have some expensive pans that my husband was kind enough to get for me. And I think that cast iron sometimes works just as good as all clad when you're trying to get a nice sear on a steak or when we get a sear on the cornbread like this, it'll be really crunchy on the outside, which is awesome. And it didn't cost $400 a pan. So you really wanna save those heirlooms for your kids, your grandkids, whatever. Keep them forever, because they will last forever. Okay. Oh, thank you for- I'm, I'm working, I'm working. Jumping in here. Let me pour in the honey butter. Because until you get the honey butter in there, it's a little dry. Sorry about that. And then I'm gonna mash up my banana. Now the best bananas to use for banana bread or banana bread cornbread. I could eat that raw actually. I know, doesn't good. it look good? You just take it to a movie with you. Okay, you so while she's finishing hers, I'm gonna go ahead and take, I've got a muffin tin. And you know, the nice thing about cornbread is that you can make it, um, once you've got the mix made, you know, you can make them in rounds, you can make them in squares, you can make them in, in sheet trays. What matters most is it's all about mass. So if you're making small ones, they're gonna take less to cook. If you're making a big sheet pan, they're gonna take longer to cook. It's all about mass. So I'm gonna take and put these in, a, and I've greased this pan up pretty good. You know, you want a really good greased up pan. So I'm just gonna take a spoonful. 
And these will rise about um, twice their size. So you don't want to fill them too full. What is this, a plantain? Why can't I get this open? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to use the oldest bananas possible. The time to make corn, uh, the time to make any banana bread is when you have those old bananas that nobody wants to eat, and they're so banana-y, it's like they slap you in the face with their banananess. That's when you make bread. Okay, so I've got the um, the cornbread mix in the muffin tins, and this is something you can do ahead of time. If you want to take and fill your muffin tins, let them sit and kind of proof for a while, it's fine. And then I'm going to take a little bit of jack cheese and put a little bit of jack cheese just on top and that'll help brown these muffins. Does so anybody like Starbucks? Right? You like that caramel sauce on the bottom of the, of the, all the little caramel macchiato crap? This is that sauce. Don't buy that stuff at the store that's, you get it and you're like, this is like, this is thin. Why does it not look like it does at Starbucks? This is the recipe you want. It's just brown sugar. It's a little bit of butter cream, some salt. I put one tablespoon of molasses. You can leave this out on the counter till forever, forever it will last. Nothing is going to get in here because it's so sugary bacteria can't live in that high sugar environment. I know that sounds crazy. Bacteria love sugar, but not that high of sugar because there's no moisture in here at all. Is that right, chemist? Chemist in the front row? I hope it's right, because that's what hotels do all the time. Okay, so you want me to leave your cornbread like it is? Um, I'm going to add my bananas I'm just now. waiting on you. I've been waiting on her all day long. I'm still waiting on her to get that bread oh in. Oh, so. my goodness. It's going to be, going to take, oh. You need to back off, Grady Spears. Well, I wanted a fork. I don't think I'm going to get one, so I'm just going to do this with my hands. This is when I would pull the little children out. Oh, the little children disappeared. So you just mash these up into just like a pulp. If you're gonna alter your own cornbread recipe, I just took out one cup of the water in this recipe and one cup of the oil, and I substituted it for banana. That's all you need to do. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, you can alter anything like that. I mean, we could put pineapple in here. What else you could would just, be you good? You could step on those like they do grapes. I can what? Step on them like they do grapes. You know, mash them like they do grapes with their feet. Oh, yuck. Okay, so while she's finishing that, I'm gonna take, I've got some butter that we softened. Um, I just laid out, you know, sticks of butter and I softened the butter. Some butter. He just softened yeah. some. <laughs> Have you been hanging out with Paula Dean? Four pounds. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna add a little pure cane syrup to it. And I'm just going to fold the cane syrup into the butter. And I'm just folding the bananas into the cornbread mixture. Any nuts of your choosing would be great in here. I think we always think of like doing walnuts. Pistachios, y'all. Pistachios are where it's at. Try a banana pistachio bread. Here's my little guy here. I'm going to fill him up. I'm not going to, I almost was like, shh. Oh, come on. It's come not vegetable on. oil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got, the, I've got the, um, the cane syrup in the butter. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I'm going to fold that in. And then um, I'm pretty much done. I'm going to wait on the cornbread to cook. When the cornbread comes out of the oven, I'm going to take a pastry brush. I'm going to dip it into this, um, into this butter and the cane syrup. And I'm going to brush the top of the biscuits or the cornbread with the cane syrup and butter. So, any questions? Yeah, let's pretty do simple. some Q&A. Where's the... No oh. questions? Come can on. We get, can we get her the mic? Oh, pardon. Here. Okay, guys, and here's what, when these muffins come out. So when they come out of the tin, you want to let them cool a little bit, otherwise they're, they're going to stick to the bottom of the pan. But let them cool, take a knife, run around the edge, and here's what they come out like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take just a little bit of the um, cane syrup and the butter and brush them on top while they're hot. Oh my. oh my god. And that butter will kind of melt into the, um, 
into the muffin. So when I pull the muffins out, I'm going to take and brush this on on top while it's hot, and that'll, that'll help the butter dissolve into the bread. So it's all right. It's, a, it's all right. Yes. I mean, it's whoa, really, whoa. really well, good. We'll start a fire here. Oh, I like your box. <laughs> you smell that? <laughs> I that, set the box on top of the fire. <laughs> is that like some home decorating you've done for your pink house? <laughs> Do you like that? Did you guys know that Grady bought a pink, a pink house? <laughs> Don't tell him I live in a pink house. It's Adobe, it's not pink. It's hot pink. You bought a pink Mary Kay house. That's, that's just cowboy. Un, that's unfair, actually. That's really unfair, I think. Okay, so. All right, where are you in this process? I'm actually coming to a place of dunitude. I've got the toffee on here, and it's gonna cut, I mean, it's delicious right now, but what we wanted to do is get a little thicker. So I just leave it on the stove, and I've kind of got it like halfway on. So the bubbles sort of move this way because they bubble up here and then they move. And so you don't, you have more control over uh, the spillovers. So you're just reducing it, getting a little bit of that water out at a time. So you don't have to sit here and baby it. You don't want it to burn. It's terrible when it burns. And it'll Cleaning take you five days there. to clean the pot. But once you do this, you've got it for, I mean, I don't know, however long it'll take you to go through five cups of caramel sauce, so in my house, that's like at least six hours. Sometimes longer if there's a Netflix watching party. Okay, I'm gonna take my stuff down there real quick, and they're gonna plate you guys some of this cornbread to try. So I'm gonna take it downstairs real quick so I can put it on plates, all right? Before I burn the box, so. No, I just took a bite of his cornbread. Whenever you see mine, <laughs> look what John left for me, wasn't that sweet? Um, I also brought um, a cinnamon ice cream. I made it yesterday because you need to chill it before you churn it in the ice cream maker. This is a really traditional ice cream on Food Network star uh, on the Team Sarah episode. Nicole made a Philadelphia style ice cream that we, we toasted the marshmallows and incorporated it with the milk and then we just pretty much churned it. I like a good Texas ice cream, and to me, that's frozen custard. So I just took some egg yolks, and instead of sugar, like you use with most ice creams, I use Pianchio sugar, which is these little cones that look like this. You've probably seen them before, and you were like, how do I use that? It's just brown sugar, and you can grate it on a grater, or you can throw it into, if you have like one of those, um, I call them robo coops. What are they when they're normal? Chop chops. It's just unrefined brown. It's a very rich, dark brown sugar. It's a little wet, you know, and so a serrated knife normally works best if you take and set it down. Just take a serrated knife and you scrape it, but it's like a wet brown sugar. You're telling me this whole time I've been grating it like cheese and you're doing it with a serrated knife? Of course. This is... Stick around me. You're going to learn a few things, all right? Like the... Ten years <laughs> on me. But I'm younger now. Uh, so the, pil the Pianchio is what I use in substitute for the sugar. It's going to give you a really rich flavor. It's a pure cane sugar, so the molasses is still in there because molasses comes from the sugar cane. Uh, it's going to be it's really, really rich. I mean, rich. Really molasses. rich, a little spice, kind of like molasses. And then I actually finished it off. It's made with cream, the eggs, and then I stirred in some Mexican cinnamon and some Mexican vanilla because I love Mexico. All of their food is great. That's gonna be the ice cream that you see on top. It's gonna just be that little bit of cinnamon and it's gonna go perfect with my dessert Banana cornbread. cornbread. I love the dessert cornbread, actually. You stole one out of my book. Oh, and buñuelos. I also made buñuelos. They are heart shapes. Okay, so is yours ready to go? I think so. Are you guys ready backstage? They're ready. Are you all ready to eat some cornbread? Are you ready to throw down? Are you ready to test and see for yourself? Do you have, have any have news? Been, uh, Do you have any good stuff you've been doing? Not really. No good news. You have no, there's nothing that you want to share with us? You're not working on any projects? Well, I've got a new restaurant in the stockyard just going to open in a couple of months. Um, the Texans lost, unfortunately. Maybe we'll have next year. You know, yeah. we've gotten away from the playoffs. But um, Rodeo Houston starts in a couple of weeks. Good lineup. I'm Ready going. Ready for Rodeo Houston. and Because um, I know Grady. It's gonna be fun. So. Yeah. Y'all ready to eat some cornbread? Let's eat. Let's eat. I have a feeling I got beat. There's a whole lot more guys out there than our girls. So I'm feeling I'm dead in this one. <laughs>
How about a big hand for our throwdown, the cowboy and the cowgirl, Grady okay. Spears and Sarah Penrod. Let's hear it for them. Sampling over at the sampling station. We'll bring that out momentarily. Here they Hello. come. Okay. If you have any questions for Grady and I about the food or his books or Food Network Star or anything, whatever, why I wore this ridiculous shirt that won't hold my microphone, we will be right up here to answer those questions for you. Thank you, Chef.